Death, fear, relationships, the children, your health, work. When you want to give up and you need courage to continue, take heart and stay tuned as RJ Jackson writes her signature message of hope on your heart. You don't have to live where you're dying and you don't have to die where you're living. Like every show of Conversations on Courage, you'll be informed, inspired, and encouraged to find the courage you need to succeed at home, work, and in your business. Get your pen and paper. You'll want to take notes. And now, your host, R.J. Jackson, The Courage Giver. Hello, beautiful. I'm your friend. R.J. Jackson, your master encourager, accountability coach, speaker for your next event, and you're down to earth. I'm listening. Tell it like it is. I love you, girl. Friend. Yep. That's me. Welcome to the conversation. This is a show for women, women who dare to be bold, and courageous, women who live life unapologetically. This is a show where you can find the courage you need in order to succeed. This is episode one of Conversations on Courage. It's the one you'll want to listen to over and over again. It's the one you'll share with your friends. Matter of fact, go ahead. Why don't you do that right now? Why don't you show your sister friend that you care about her and you want her to succeed? Go ahead and share the show by hitting the share button right now. After all, sharing is caring. On today's show, we promise to fill your cup with courage one sip at a time. We're going to provide you with success strategies, inspiration, and purposeful conversation. What else are we going to do while we're together? Well, we're going to respond to your questions. You know, the ones you had the courage to ask out loud on our Facebook group. Girl, I'm working on it too. Oh, and by the way, if you're new and you're not a part of our group, we invite you to join us today on Facebook where you will find a safe place to be you, authentically you, and meaningful relationships with women just like you. We'll also share in your story, and we will provide you with a life-giving experience. And, of course, before we end, we'll talk to our featured guest. This week's featured guest is Jewel Diamond Taylor. Jewel Diamond Taylor is a voice of empowerment, born to teach possibility thinking, leadership, emotional wellness, faith, and success principles. Jewel, a.k.a. the Self-Esteem Doctor, teaches impactful insights and actionable steps to increase personal success, deeper faith, emotional wellness, inner peace, and a life of purpose. She is an author, a speaker, a success coach, a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Let's welcome to the table, Jewel Diamond Taylor. Jewel, welcome to the table. I'm so looking forward to this meal that you're going to serve us today. How are you doing today, sister? I'm doing well, RJ. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, we're so honored to have you here. Let's just go right ahead and jump right into the conversation. It's one I've been waiting to have for a while now. So I know that you're known as the self-esteem doctor. So what's your story? Like, how did you get to where you are as a self-esteem doctor? That's a good question. <laughs> um, because of speaking, writing, counseling, coaching, being on radio and some um, media, 
I began to realize that my audiences, especially women, were lacking in a sense of self-worth, that you could teach people, you know, the importance of having faith and setting their goals and having vision boards, but I began to see that a lot of them were just lacking in a sense of self-worth, which manifests itself by procrastination and shame and worry and just putting things off because you just don't feel worthy of God's blessings. You don't feel worthy of success. You don't feel worthy of a relationship. You don't feel worthy. And so I realized I had to kind of back it up and really deal with this issue of self-worth. Um, a lot of people think that we're talking about being prideful, but no, we need to understand there's a difference between being prideful and having a sense of self-worth. Uh, there is a, as you know, there is a alarming numbers of women who experience domestic abuse, a divorce, um, just a lot of tragedies, and it can really knock the shout out of you. <laughs> it can really make make you feel like uh, you're just under constant attack, that you are ashamed of your poverty, ashamed of divorce, ashamed of your body image ashamed of so many different things that you just never get back up again and recover. And so I realized that if I began to address a person's self-worth, that they would be able to recover and discover their inner power and begin to realize that their resiliency is part of the journey. You know, they say before we can win, we have to believe we are worthy. So as the self-esteem doctor, I'm sure you write plenty of prescriptions for people to find healing and wholeness. So what would you say as a self-esteem doctor helping women understand that they have worth? What would you say is the number one prescription you find yourself writing for women? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> The one that comes to mind is learning the power of no, learning the power of no, that it is a complete sentence, that you have a personal and spiritual right to draw boundaries against people that are treating you less than a child of God, that you have the right to step away from drama. You have the right to say no to people that are disrespecting you, abusing you, manipulating you, you have that right. Now, there's someone listening, RJ, that may say, oh, that's no problem for me. Well, that's not my audience. My audience comprises of the ones who've had issues with people pleasing or have had very adverse childhoods or women who have Um, strive to do everything right, be the good wife, be the good daughter, and yet they kept finding that people were misusing and abusing them. And uh, so they had to change that inner talk. And so the ability to say no is something that some people are just anointed with. They can just say it. (laughs) But there are some that just, you know, don't know how to do that. And so that's the beginning, knowing your rights having boundaries, that you don't have to be um, someone's doormat. You don't have to be the fixer. You don't have to be someone's savior. That's God's job. But when women wear too many hats and trying to please everybody and hold the family together and hold their life together, working two jobs, um, just trying to do so many things, To be able to say, no, I can't do it. No, I can't go. No, I don't do that anymore. When a woman wants to turn her life around and experience salvation, wholeness, she may have to leave behind a past, and that past may be trying to call her. And she has to be able to say, no, I can't. I don't do that anymore. I don't say that anymore. I don't go to those places anymore. And when she's able to start doing that, her self-worth is really being redeemed. And that self-worth and no, I I can totally see how they go hand in hand because if you don't feel you're worthy, you're you're always going to try to please other people. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that's that's your audience. And people don't understand, especially women, hey, you can be a big person with a kind heart. You can be a good person with a kind heart and still say no. 
Exactly. Yeah, there there are many people whose kindness is taken for as weakness or even their Christian walk. You know, sometimes there are mixed signals, mixed messages that we feel like as a Christian I have to endure. No, you don't. My perspective is no, you don't. You do not have to be um, abused and disrespected and talked to in a certain way or neglected. You don't have to be denied. You don't have to endure long-suffering uh, as a Christian. You have to know how to stand on your holy ground. You have to know how to speak life over your circumstances. The word says that there's life and there's death in the tongue. But if you are silent and if you don't have the courage, which is your word, if you don't have the courage, you need someone to support you in developing that courage muscle, and that's what I do. I believe that. When I'm walking in faith, I'm trusting God. But when I'm walking in courage, I'm trusting that I'm going to do and say what I need to do and say to get up out of a bad situation, to get that job, to get that healing, to get that joy restored, to get the drama out of my house or out of my life. I'm counting on myself to stand up and do and say what I need to do. There's a difference between having courage and having faith. And both are definitely required if we want to live our best life ever. I like how you reminded us that no is a complete sentence. And Mm -hmm. one thing I just want to add to that, that we as women fail to realize as well, because as you said, we don't feel worthy, is that it doesn't need to be justified. There's no explanation needed. If we say no, it's just (laughs) simply no. Yes, yes. I learned I learned that from my husband, you know, watching I, you know, had sons and a husband and, and I would they had no problem in saying no to certain requests and I thought that was being mean and then I began to understand, oh, they had an agenda, they had things they wanted to get done, they had a certain focus and I learned that my list of things to do was always long. Let me help you, let me help that person, let me respond to every request. And then I was wondering why I was burned out. Then I was wondering why I was resentful. And then I was wondering why I was tired. And it's because I didn't have boundaries. And I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And really the truth is you just want to be seen as the good person, the superwoman. And it's like, no, I can't do that anymore. It's, it's very costly. And, and one of my quotes in my book says, if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. So if it's costing your peace to always say yes to everything and every request, that's too expensive because you're going to pay for it later. You're going to have high blood pressure. You're going to burn out. You're going to be resentful. You're going to have anger. You're going to have issues with um, stress, and you're going to become ineffective because now you're burning the candle at both ends because you didn't have the courage to say no. And and it's the way you say it. You don't have to be mean about it. You know, for instance, if somebody will ask me for some money, I'll just say, well, you know, God bless you. I hope your need is filled, but I'm not not able to do that right now. Now, Now, in one, in those sentences, you did not hear me say the word no. (laughs) So there's creative ways to build boundaries and still be diplomatic, be tactful, be loving, be kind. But you are establishing a boundary that I'm not the I'm not that one. I am not the one. You're listening to Conversations on Courage with your host, RJ Jackson, the Courage Giver. Quick, call your friends and invite them to listen in. Listen, if you're the one who's just joining us, we want to say welcome to the table. I'm RJ Jackson, the Courage Giver, and we are having a conversation. Jewel Diamond Taylor, a.k.a. the Self-Esteem Doctor, is giving us a prescription on self-worth. And what she has just told us is very simple. Learn to say no. It is, as she said, a complete sentence. No mm-hmm. justification need it. I, I love that no is kind of like a language. And for me, Jewel, it's like a love language. If we're going to have healthy relationships, we got to understand love language, right? Oh, and absolutely. So no, 
Right, exactly. And no, it's one of those languages that's so universal. Like you can say it in English, it's no. You can say it in Spanish, it's no. You can say it in Italian, it's no. <laughs> the thing is about tone and timing. And yes. you could say it in a tone that is abrupt and harsh and mean, or you could say it in a way that's still loving and kind and respectful. You don't have to be nasty about it. And I think Absolutely. that... Sometimes we just feel like if I say no to a person, you know, one of the things that we all fear is abandonment. We don't want to be abandoned. We don't want to be cut off. We don't want to be, uh, you know, in the margins of life. So a lot of times when a person has had a past history of being abandoned, of being left out and seeking love in all the wrong places, that person will tend to have a hard time saying no because they don't want to be left out. And so as a self-esteem doctor, what I'm doing is helping women to heal that brokenness, heal it. Because, you know, if you cut your finger, you're going to put a Band-Aid on it. But a lot of us are bleeding emotionally, and we don't know how to stop the bleeding. And so that's what I do is to help you stop that bleeding because of past issues of shame, abandonment, rejection, abuse. Uh, poverty, racism, divorce. It's just so many types of issues that women have gone through and they keep getting up and keep getting up, but they're limping. They're not really standing up straight. They're limping. And they're hopping around on one foot and they're still trying to show up and make things happen and, you know, take care of their family and and do what they got to do until they just collapse. And I'm here to say, I'm here for you before you fall. I'm here to help you to stop the limping, stop the bleeding, and you have to be vulnerable enough to admit that, wow, I have been doing that. And that, that takes courage to be able to say, you know what, I need to, I, I owe myself a big apology. I had to give myself an apology. Say, you know what, Jewel, I, I'm so sorry for all the times that you just gave your power away. And I had to forgive myself. And you have to do that with great compassion. You know, there's an old school song that says, um, oh, it just came to my mind. Oh, everybody plays the fool sometime. All of us play the fool sometime until we wake up and realize, wait a minute, I just gave my power away, my time away, my body away, my money away, my secrets away, my joy away all in the name of love, and we realize it really wasn't love. And so it's it's a process, and it does take great courage to admit to yourself, I have developed a pattern that that is self-destructive, and I need to stop, and I'm not going to blame anyone. I'm going to admit it, and I'm going to analyze it, and I'm going to start stop the bleeding. And the way you stop the bleeding is you first have to be aware And you can't keep covering it up with a Band-Aid and say, oh, well, they didn't mean it. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Or, oh, you know, because I'm this or that, that's why they do this or that. That's putting a Band-Aid over it and covering up the pain. And to have the pain exposed, well, it's painful. It's painful to admit to yourself that, you've missed the mark of your purpose, your joy, your goals, your your financial goals, your, your living in your purpose, living in joy, because you thought that if you did ABC with this person or this job or this church or this sorority or with this friend or with your child or with your mate, you thought you were going to get something, and when you realize you're not getting it, when you realize that you're being disrespected and unfulfilled, you have to stop and think and say, wait a minute now, let me, let me look in the mirror and let me see what, is, what are my expectations, what is my pattern, what are my habits, what is it that I'm doing that's getting in the way of me having some healthy relationships, what's getting in the way of me walking in my purpose. And, you, and so it's, it's painful to do, but that's, that's where the healing comes, when you're able to say, oh, I see what's going on here. <laughs> you have to literally convict yourself, and I had to do that for myself. And when I convicted myself, man, it was such a big change in my life, a big change in my marriage, a big change in my finances. I had to tell, the, I had to have the courage to look at Jewel in the mirror and say, Jewel, 
this has got to stop. Stop it. Stop it. You, you, you're, you're suffering silently, and you think that you're going to get, that it's okay. It's not okay. It's not. You're giving your power away. That, that's not okay. You're giving too much time to this particular situation or this particular organization. That is not okay. So you have to have this conversation with yourself. That's, that's part of the prescription is to have the conversation with yourself, but with compassion, not judgment, because that is what uh, perpetuates the bleeding is just judging yourself. Self-esteem is knowing your worthiness, knowing who you are in God that enough people will criticize you. Why are we going to do it to ourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the song, Everybody Plays the Fool, and as you just shared that, we're not alone. Even the song says, there's no exception to the rule. So for someone who's listening right now, they need to know, girl, it's not just you. You are Mm -hmm. not alone. Exactly. There's no Thank exception. you for bringing up that line. Yeah, there's just no exception to the rule. <laughs> no exception. No uh-huh. exception to the rule. But here's uh-huh. the thing, and you've mentioned it over and over again in the conversation, the conversation on courage that you continue to talk about, matter of fact, that emotional wellness and healthy, those are key words for living life on purpose or knowing that we're worthy. So let's talk about those words for a second. Why are they so important? How do we implement them into our daily routine as women? Well, that's a great question. Thank you for that, RJ. I, I, after 34 years of speaking, at some point I realized that a, a, a large pillar of what I teach and stand for has to be emotional wellness. It has to be because when you're not emotionally well, you can respond and react to situations, react to life, react to people in an unhealthy and unproductive way. And if you're not aware of that, you'll just find yourself just going down a rabbit's hole. You'll find yourself self-destructing because you're not aware of how your emotions are affecting everything around. Your emotions have energy. Your emotions uh, dictate, um, well, you, you know, you can interchange the two words, emotions and feelings. And so those emotions or feelings are birthed out of your thinking. Based on how you think determines how you feel. So I love the word of God that says, be transformed by the renewing of your thinking. So a lot of people are just operating on autopilot, and they'll just say things like, well, I'm just sad all the time. You're sad all the time because of what you're thinking. Or... You know, I'm just, you know, nobody loves me. There's no good men out there. You know, there's no jobs. That's what you're thinking. And because you think that and you believe that, you have that emotion of sadness, of rejection, of unworthiness. So you have to connect the dots. Your emotion are determined by what you're thinking. And we're such creatures of habit. We think the same thing and we're not even we're not elevating, we're not upgrading our thinking. And this is what I challenge my life coaching clients is to upgrade your thinking and to become very aware of the power of your thoughts because thoughts become things and they show up as depression or they can show up as optimism. It can show up as faith. It can show up as courage based on what you are thinking. So, you know, we hear this saying in our community, you know, I'm all in my feelings. Okay. (laughs) I wrote in my book, your feelings can be expensive. If you all in your feelings, and let's use the example, I'm all in my feelings today. I'm feeling depressed. Okay, that could be very expensive because now, You're not paying your bills on time. You're not going to work. You're not taking care of your hygiene. Your house is a mess. Uh, Your relationships become challenged uh, because you are all in your feelings. And so um, your emotional wellness is very, very much a part of what I teach a lot about is just becoming aware of what you're feeling, and specifically for women because our feeling nature generally speaking, is more heightened than 
males. In fact, when you look at the word female, the F-E in front of male is letting us know that our feelings are more heightened, more sensitive. And I think that the creator, I think the Holy Spirit did that because we are nurturers that, you know, I use the example, you know, when the baby's crying, more than likely the mother's going to hear before the dad, right? Because <laughs> she's tuned in to that baby. Her feelings are tuned in to what the, um, the gatherer needs. The hunter has to be out getting bread and butter. Not to say that men aren't doing that, but I'm just saying in the original design, we had to be tuned in to the children, tuned in to the community, to what they needed. While a hunter is more about preservation and and surviving and and bringing home the meat. But what's happening with women now, now she's the hunter and the gatherer. (laughs) So, So either she's turning off her feelings just to survive and she's becoming cold hearted. And again, I go right back to the scripture that says you must guard your heart because the heart is where all of your emotions are. And if your heart is full of resentment, rage, stress, depression, grief, bitterness, jealousy, secrets, um, you you're gonna have some you're gonna have some troubles in life. You're gonna have some health issues, you're gonna have relationship issues, you could have all types of issues because you have not dealt with those emotions. And so we we're living in a time where RJ, your mother and her mother and her mother before them didn't have the didn't have the time and the luxury to sit down with Jewel Diamond Taylor, the self esteem doctor, and say, Let's look at these emotions. Let's connect the dots. We have that time now. We have that luxury. We have radio shows like yours. We have magazines. We have T V. We have social media. We have people that are talking now and people are beginning to see how they have been damaged by what they were taught, what they were exposed to, because we are shaped by three things. We are shaped by our experiences, our expectations, and our environment. And so as a self-esteem doctor, I help people to, you know, do that trace back to, you know, what was the environment that produced those feelings? What were your expectations that produced that feeling? What were your past experiences that produced that feeling? You know, I deal with a lot of women that um, have been raped, have incest, sexual violence, and they don't trust. And and when you meet them, uh, initially you may think, oh, that person is withdrawn, or she's mean, or she's snappy, or she um, seems hard, or she seems very shy and fragile, and we judge that person not realizing that their past experience of being violated has created this very fragile or very cold heart. And so the self-esteem doctor helps them to rebuild that trust, to heal that wound, to understand that their worth is not tied up in that past experience, that your experience should not become your identity. Oh, I'm divorced. Oh, oh, you know, oh, I I was a foster child. Oh, you know, um, I'm I'm a cancer of this. If that becomes your identity, you are now wearing a cloth of, of shame, like there's something wrong with you. Life happens to all of us, and and if I went through and talked about all of my losses, all of my hurts, all of my setbacks, all of my wrong choices, and that was my conversation all the time, that means that those experiences are so strong that now they have become my identity. But that's not all that I am. My self-esteem allows me to talk about more than just my stumbles. My self-esteem allows me to have an identity because I believe that when you don't have a healthy self-esteem, you experience identity theft. The enemy steals your identity by having you only identify with those areas of your life where you were hurt, where you were betrayed, where you were left behind where you were struggling, where you were sick, where you were broken, and so you experience identity theft. So as a self-esteem doctor, I'm helping women to get some healthy 
feelings and emotions, though, you know, the fruits of the spirit, joy, love, peace, gratitude, hope. Those are the fruits of the spirit. And a lot of us are, you know, dining on rotten fruit because no one has helped us to, you know, plant new seeds. Plant new seeds. You know, and those then, new seeds, those new seeds are so important because mm-hmm. healthy things grow, and they need seeds to grow. Yeah. And so, yeah, those new seeds are really important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, because not only are you a doctor who writes prescriptions on emotional wellness and being healthy, you're also a best-selling author. So as a self-esteem doctor, you don't just send people home with a prescription. You give them the resources they need to succeed and become healthy. As a best-selling author with books such as You Deserve More and Success Gems, You make it clear that you're concerned about women living out of their greatness. So what words of courage would you leave women today that they can know they deserve more and they can be women on the grow? Oh, thank you for that. Women on the Grow is the name of my um, nonprofit organization to empower women, women on the grow. We've existed um, for several years. We started off with another name, but we changed names a few years ago. So I've been doing this for 34 years, and it's exactly what it implies, helping women to grow spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, to just grow mentally, emotionally. And um, I just want them to have the courage to face their truth, and that takes courage to actually say, this is who I am. This is who I believe God has purposed me to be, to do, and to have. It takes courage to say that, and it took me courage to say that in 1984 when I quit my job to say I am a motivational speaker. Well, the coaching and the books and the radio and the new talk show that I'm on, all of those things were birthed out of that courage. And I would say to anyone that once you're able to stand flat-footed and say, this is who I am, not what they say I am, not what my past says I am, not even what my parents say I am, but I know deep down inside this is who God says I am. And once you begin to speak that, I believe that you you will start attracting the people and the resources and activities that will help you to to develop that. But that's the beginning is speaking life over yourself, having the courage to say, I am, and then complete the sentence. I am victorious. I am wonderfully blessed. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am forgiven. I am an author. I am a difference maker. I am a child of God. I am deserving of his best. So it begins with the word because even in the word of God, it says in the beginning was the word. And so your word creates a world. Your words create your world. So if your words are about struggle and poverty and hurt, it becomes your world, and you just see it everywhere you, everywhere, everywhere you are. It shows up. You see the hurt. You see the pain. You see the struggle. You're experiencing it because that's your words. Your words have power. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. It's just as simple as that, changing your words. And you, you talked about that earlier, RJ, when you said um, – the language of love, the words that we speak. Your words are your medicine. Your words are medicinal. And so I teach women, don't say things like, oh, I'm, um, I'm broke. No, my money is circulating. I'm not sick. My, my body is healing. My body is cleansing. Because that's all sickness is, is the body throwing off. It knows how to heal itself. But we don't like the process of the healing you know, because it's so uncomfortable and we live in a world that says, you know, take this drug, take this, take this, do this, and we're not listening to our own, you know, inner voice. We're not listening to God within us. So that is the beginning, I would say, is just beginning to speak the word over yourself. I love the gospel song, encourage yourself. 
And when you look at the word encourage, inside the word encourage is courage. So it's courage yourself. You know, get yourself strong inside. Do it for you first. You know, we're so busy. I got to do it for the kids. I got to do it for my man. I got to help my mom. I got to help everybody else, my siblings. It's like, no, encourage yourself. That is not selfish. And see, that's where women get tripped up a lot because we've been conditioned by society that if we are focusing on self, then we are selfish. And that's what we have to throw away. You must take care of yourself. You cannot be a good wife, daughter, mother, friend, servant, whatever you are called to do. You can't do any of those things with excellence if you are not taking care of yourself. You are the best teacher for your family when they see you taking your herbal supplements, when they see you drinking your water, when they see you praying, when they see you uh, smiling, when they see you working on your goals and your dreams, when they see you being honest, when they see you being faithful, then when they see you exercising, hey, when they see you breathing, when they see you laughing, they're like, oh, when they see you taking a vacation or going on one of my retreats, you're teaching them that that's what they must do for themselves. So, you know, in my books, I, you know, I, a lot of the things I write about are nothing original. It's just that I have my own way of writing it. And I do believe in that statement that you cannot serve from an empty cup. And so many women are empty. And they're not taking the time to fill themselves back up with, with joy and with peace and with rest and Time to read, time to pray, time to breathe, time to do those things, that their hobbies, their interests. And uh, when she's not doing that, she's going to be running on fumes. I just got a text the other day from somebody, it was today, and she said, I'm just running on fumes. I'm on fumes. I knew exactly what she meant. And I knew why she was running on fumes because this is a person who is helping everybody before she helps herself. And sometimes as women, we forget the I goes first. So I am. And as we are in the season of gratitude, I want to say I am grateful for this conversation that we've had a chance to have today. And just before we end, I I really want to know how do we connect with Jewel Diamond Taylor, the self-esteem doctor? Okay. But, well, there's so many different ways you can connect with me. Um, I'm very active on Facebook, Jewel Diamond Taylor. That's the search. Uh, I have a website, JewelDiamondTaylor.com. I have an email, JewelMotivates at gmail.com. I have a newsletter I send out every week. I have a number they can call to schedule one-on-one life coaching with me or to invite me to speak. For their church, their conference, their retreat, um, a book signing, that number is 323-964-1736. And when they connect with me, um, they will learn about our upcoming Women on the Grow activity. We do a lot of things together as Women on the Grow. And we have women from all walks of life, all age groups. We have women in their 80s and women in their 20s. We have single women, married women. We have women that are working, women who are retired. We have women that are professionals. Um, we just, it's, it's a wonderful organization. And we do have a Woman on the Grow page on Facebook. And um, there's just so many ways you can just Google me, go to my website, and you will be learning about all the activities that we have. Awesome. If you missed any of that, you can always find it on our website, conversationsoncourage.com. That's conversationsoncourage.com. Jewel, it's been a delight having this conversation with you. Thank you for joining us at the table today. We know that you have great things coming up, and we are definitely going to stay connected. We're going to also be watching you on the Blend talk show. Yeah, and thank you so much, RJ, for coming to our to our um, premiere. We do have a page on Facebook, the Blend talk show. It is um, produced by LaVonda Rouse, 
And right now we are on social media. That is our platform, and we welcome everybody viewing it, sharing it, posting your comments, your likes, because as we get um, some momentum and traction with this, we know that we will be expanding to other platforms. So right now everybody's got a phone, a tablet, an iPad, and they can just watch us. We have several episodes on the Blend Talk Show Facebook page right now, and they can just go and watch it. They can follow us and get updates about new episodes that will be coming forth in the future. We love the, the Blend Talk Show. It's for black women, for doctors. I'm not a medical doctor, but we do have a psychologist. We have a naturopathic doctor. Um, so we have doctors to talk about issues that are relevant to black women, Dr. Tapa Picard, Dr. Gloria Chance, and Dr. P. Samadhi. And we are just thrilled to have this opportunity to empower our sisters. And me personally, I'm a blender. I yeah, there you go. <laughs> you are a <laughs> blender, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes, want to invite you to watch it and check it out. And, again, if you missed that on how you can connect, you can always find it on our website, conversationsoncourage.com. That's conversationsoncourage.com. Thank you again, Jewel, so much for being our guest today and joining us here at the table. And thank you. Keep up the great work. You are a difference maker. I appreciate you so much, RJ. It's absolutely been my pleasure, Jewel. Thank you for joining us at the table. And most of all, thank you for being the most important part of the conversation. Yes, this is the season of gratitude. And gratitude always shows up in our attitude. And as Jewel shared with us today, we have to have an attitude that says, I am worthy. In order to do that, it's so important, as they say, to watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. And watch your habits. They become your character and watch your character because it becomes your destiny. And the one thing about the great plans that God has for you, they are plans for a future and plans for a hope. So it's so important to realize how important it is to have an attitude of gratitude and to remember that you are worthy. You've been listening to Conversations on Courage, and I'm your host, R.J. Jackson, the Courage Giver, absolutely excited about this opportunity to speak life into your life, to bring to you the resources, the tools that you need in order to succeed and be all that God has created you to be. I'd love to continue the conversation with you, whether that's one-on-one or at your next retreat, conference, or business meeting. Let's have a conversation on courage. Connect with me today. I'll be waiting. Thank you for joining us for Conversations on Courage. Now that you've been inspired, informed, and encouraged, it's time for you to take action. So head on over to thecouragegiver.com. That's thecouragegiver.com. And connect with RJ for a personal conversation on courage. She's waiting to help you take the risk you need to succeed.